But we're going to begin with our scripture reading. Deacon Pascal will do our scripture reading for us this morning. And um, we'll come back. Uh, I'll ask Deacon Ness if you will do our prayer this morning. And we'll go from there. So it's not scripted today as it normally is. So just bear with me. And we're going to we're gonna have service anyhow. Amen? Amen. Deacon Amen. Pastor, you ready? Good morning. Our morning scripture comes from the book of John, 8th chapter, beginning at the 31st verse. And it reads, To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Then answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are ready to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the father's presence and you do what you have heard from your fathers. God's blessed word. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you for allowing us to see yet another day, Lord. We thank you for just bringing us through another week, Lord God. We ask you, Lord, to just come into our service, Lord God, have your holy presence available to us, Father God, that we may open our hearts to whatever it is your word has for us today, Lord God. We thank you for pastor right now, Lord God, that even in the midst of uncertainty when things happen, Lord God, we can continue to move forward and be also ready, Father. We ask that you be with Minister Mosley right now, Lord God. Whatever she is going through, Lord God, we know that you are a healer and we just thank you in advance, Lord. Ask that you continue to bless Brother Albert Lord God, Sister Boone, Lord Jesus, Mother Ingram, everyone that is assembled here today, those who are on the road during service traveling, Father, we just ask you to protect them, keep them safe, Father God, and we just continue to bless your name, Lord God, for all the things that you do that we're so undeserving of, Lord. Just continue to be in the midst of all things, Father God, and, and we just thank and bless and praise your name, Father God. Bless those who are incarcerated, Lord God, in rehab facilities, Father God. Bless those in Texas and all across this country who are struggling, Lord God, with, with weather and, and, and just not having the things that they need, Lord God. Make a way for them as your resources are always available. And we just say yeah, thank you. Lord. Just continue to, to, to be in the midst, Lord God. And we just thank you for our salvation that you've made available to us in Jesus name. All right. Amen. So what we will do at this time is we will go ahead and move forward now that we've had our scripture and our prayer. Uh, we did not have a traditional call to worship, but we will continue to move forward because I think everybody is ready for whatever it is we will have this morning. So at this time, we will have Sister Michelle come forward with any announcements and then we will have Sister Constance Reams come to us for her uh, Black History Moment. And then we'll share the Black History Moment that um, the Hackney family has. And then our pastor um, will come forward um, from there. So go ahead, uh, Sister Nichelle. Good morning, everyone. I am so glad to see the sunshine. I'm very appreciative of the rain, but I am enjoying the sunshine. Um, I have an announcement this morning. Butner Creek, Moore, Stem, Wilton, and all surrounding areas, come out and help this young lady reach her goal. And this is from Brother Robert Fountain. Five of your favorite food trucks, RJ's Fish, Wings and Things, Kona Ice, Nothing But Smoke, Sobaka, Big D's Presto. Saturday, March the 13th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., 
106 West C Street, Butner. Funds raised go to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Please follow COVID-19 guidelines, grab and go. And again, that date is March the 13th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., 106 West C Street. We have three birthdays this week. Monday the 22nd, Mother Elaine Brooks. Friday the 25th, Aunt Betty Austin. Excuse me, that's Thursday the 25th. And on Friday the 26th, Mother Chavis. So let's wish, e let's wish each one of these young ladies a very special and happy birthday. Do we have any anniversaries? Do we have any other birthdays? Do we have any visitors? If not, those are all the announcements that I have. Thank you so much, Sister Michelle. We really appreciate that. And happy birthday to all of our members. We hope you make it a joyful occasion this week, even though I'm sure you're not having any parties that you had originally planned. We uh, ask that you um, give them a call, give them a text, uh, shoot them a Facebook message. It's on been that another day. year. The Lord has kept you. Another okay. year. The Lord has blessed you. Another year the Lord has seen you through. So from your pastor and United Christian, we really do love you. And I sing happy, happy birthday to you. God bless you all. I'm finished. Very good, very good. I, I was, I thought I heard uh, Deacon trying to get in on your duet and, and make it a duet, but you, you shut that down. That was, that was nice. <laughs> Throw me off key. Throw me off key. <laughs> I love how we can have fun. At this time, Sister Constance Reams will come to us with her Black History Moment. Good morning. Good morning. Our Black History Month spotlight will be on um, Dr. Rebecca. Lee Kumpler. In our Black History Spotlight, I would like to introduce you to Dr. Rebecca Lee Kumpler. Dr. Rebecca Lee Kumpler was born on February the 8th, my birthday, and died on March 9, 1895. Dr. Kumpler is the first African American woman to earn a medical degree and became a physician and published a well respected medical text in the United States. After serving as a nurse for multiple years, Kumpler attended the New England Female Medical College, the first school to train women in becoming doctors. Upon her graduation from New England Female Medical College, she became the first female African-American doctor and practiced in Boston. However, Dr. Kumpler felt compelled to move to Virginia to work with the Freeman's Bureau, giving medical care to free slaves. In her later career, she published a book entitled um, A Book for Medical Disclosures in Two Parts, which shed light on her medical field, experience and insight on into teaching mothers and children. Dr. Kumpler is honored today as a pioneer for American, American women in the medical field and her commitment to helping others through her profession. Thank you. Man, amen. 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 Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, that is not um, a spotlight that I've heard before. So thank you so much for that. And at this time, we will share what the Hackneys have. <laughs> Good morning, church family. Today, my sister and I will share today's Black History. On February 21st, 1940, legendary singer Nina Simone was born. On this day in 1961, Otis Boykin patented the electrical resistor used in all guided missiles and IBM computers. 
Lastly, on this day in 1965, activist Malcolm X was assassinated at the age of 39. And now we will highlight the North Carolina Central University. In North Carolina Central University was charted as a private institution in 1909 and opened its doors to students in July 1910 by pharmacist James E. Shepard in Durham, North Carolina. In 1923, the North Carolina State Legislature converted the institution into the North Carolina College for Negroes and dedicated it to liberal arts education and the preparation of teachers and principals. At this time, NCCU became the nation's first state-supported liberal arts college for black students. Notable Eagle alumni are numerous, but we would like to recognize the CPU today. Golden Eagle mother Elaine Brooks, NC Representative G.K. Butterfield Jr., Reverend William Barber II, NBA Hall of Famer Samuel Sam Jones as the second most NBA championships behind Bill Russell. Artist and NFL athlete Ernie Barnes, whose work was featured in the TV sitcom Good Times and the cover of Marvin Gaye's 1976 album. Coach Herman Boone, portrayed by Denzel Washington in Remember the Titans. Actress Ken Coles was Sinclair on TV sitcom Living Single. And our parents, David and Anissa Hackney. If you ever have a chance, please attend any NCCU sporting event where you are sure to hear the mighty sound machine perform next. Take a listen. <laughs> We just give God the glory on today, God. I thank all of y'all for being here. And I know the founders, I know that you all are, are working today. You're on the road, but to God be the glory for you, baby, to listen in. I just praise God for you on this morning. I just give God the glory for all of you all. I just want to thank him. I thank you, um, Deacon Anessa, for, for presiding for us. I thank all the church family that's listening and, and, and doing. I thank God for you, Sister Constance, for your contribution on today and Deacon Pascal, thank you so much. Uh, the Hackman children and family, uh, uh, Deacon Hackman, thank you. I just bless all of you all on today. I thank God because, you know, 
it, it, we always talk about being ready and, and be ready and be prepared. And I know that. I know that as, as a preacher, I know it as a pastor, but, but we, sometimes we got to admit, we're not always ready or we're not always prepared. We can get ready. And if you got something there, you got something to work with. But if you don't, you caught off guard. So I, I thank God that that I I won't caught off guard this morning. And I got a word for you. And as I get ready to go to this word, I, I, I just got a, a, a couple of verses I want to share with you all this morning. And the song goes like this, and it says, I am free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. I'm no longer bound. There is no more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. I'm going to say it again. I am free. Oh, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm free. I'm no longer bound. There is no more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Thank you, God. That's my testimony today, church. That's my testimony. I am free. I am free. And, and you know, the other day, the Holy Spirit was, was telling me about today. But I pushed it back. You know how we do stuff. You push things back. But I thank God that today I am now a witness yet again of how God will talk to you. He will forewarn you and pre, pre, uh, uh, show you what is to be if you will hear his word and his voice. Thank you, God. Today, Father God, we thank you for another opportunity to come before you, God. We thank you for another time, God, that we will share a word together, God. Have a breather, have a long, God. We thank you, dear God, that through your manifestation of the word, God, that this word will go forth with, with clarity, God, with conviction, with truth, God, that it will go forth with deliverance and with healing, dear God, that we will know at the end, God, that we are truly free and we are free indeed. For it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. So as we heard in our reading, John chapter 8, um, I think Deacon Pascal read verses 31 through 36. So now this is Jesus talking, having conversation with the Jews here. <clears throat> and, and so the thing of that they were going through was that they were they were of a, a, a great belief in who Jesus was, but they were a little weak in their faith, kind of like us sometimes, just kind of like us sometimes. But the word said, I'm, the word says, I'm going to go up to verse 30, I'm going to catch 31. <clears throat> As he spoke these words, many believed on him. Then Jesus said, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed? And you shall <clears throat> know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. Why do you say you shall be made free? And they were thinking, <clears throat> in the natural <laughs> sense of freedom. <clears throat> Jesus answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin, and the servant <coughs> abides not in the house forever, but the son abided ever. If the son therefore shall, if the son therefore shall make you free, he shall be free indeed. Amen. 
So now with this, I want to use for a brief topic. I'm free. Warm, warm. I am free. And I want you to make it personal to yourself and say, I am free. I could even say we're free. But, but, but that's a stretch because I really don't know if you are free. I know I'm free, but I can't speak about you because, see, I'm not talking about the physical uh, freedom that, that the Jews got mixed up on when they were tech talking about they hadn't been enslaved to any man. So they were thinking, well, I've not been enslaved to, to man. So what are you talking about, Jesus? But, but here, right here, we, we, we see that Jesus was talking about a spiritual freedom, a spiritual opportunity to be set free from your sins and your sins indeed. And that's where we have to realize that we have to be free and we have to be free indeed. Many are free, but they don't realize they're free. They don't realize that the Savior has come to set them free. So now, I believe this is a season of reset for us. We've heard that word a lot. God is speaking directly to us, to me and to you. And there are some clear instructions that we have to follow as we enter this next leg of our, of our journey. And the more I read testimony here and see testimonies and talk with you all and other folks on the phone, I see that God is doing a new thing in this season, in this season that we want to tag COVID to, pandemic to, call it what you want. We're in a new season of our lives. And I can tell you that God is preparing us for something super special, something that we've not stepped into the territory before. There, there is an outpouring of purpose in our lives right now. <clears throat> it's giving us a season and a time to, to check ourselves out, to, to, to realize that he is still the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He has delivered all our sins and our trials, our tests, and tribulations. Does that mean we're not going to go through some things? No, it does not mean we're not going to go through. But it does mean that if we go through, that we have a, a Lord and a Savior and a healer and a deliverer that is with us that will see us through. Yeah. We've got to keep moving forward. Yeah. I'm free, y'all. I'm yeah. free. Uh, although history and throughout history, we learn about the year of Jubilee. And, and, and you know, Jubilee was a time where or any debt that you had would be settled or forgiven, so to speak. And prisoners would be set free from any uh, thing, sin, or uh, um, thing that they had committed that was a criminal or criminal nature. But see now, in our lives, in our spiritual life, there is a season for us that we call Jubilee. And that's the time when we give our hearts to God and we begin to abide in him and his word. Now we have been made free. Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. And the more powerful effect that this coronavirus has had, on, it looks like we've been through the worst. When the numbers were climbing every day, it was off the truck. It looks like we've been through our worst. But see, what's happening now is that was in the physical realm, the physical body parts of it. But when we began to look around, now we're going through, people are going through the financial hardship of this COVID virus. And they began to lose cars and homes and jobs and families begin to have to live in their cars or, or live in a home shelter, someplace like that, oh. because of what we've been through. But let me tell you something, even in that, there is a time of freedom for every man and every woman. We got to look in that mirror. We got to stop making excuses for what I did have, what I should have had, and look at where I am now. I still have life. I still have health or a reasonable portion. And I still have a mind to serve God. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul says hallelujah. I don't know about your soul, but I know Jeanette's soul said hallelujah. Do you want to be free this morning? Woo. Do you want to live? Wow. You know, we've been living in three, four, five, six rooms for the last several months. You know, next month's going to be a year. The third Sunday in March, we live to see it will be a year that we've been out of a physical building on Salem Road to church. And you've been living in your dwelling places, close up on your family and your friends or whoever. And it's like, 
I just had so much. I just want to be free. I just want to break loose. I'm going to tell you, we've had so much rain and so much cloud that the other day when the sun peeped out, I felt so good. I got energized. And the day I look around, the sun is shining. It has not gone back behind the clouds. I feel free today. I feel like God sent a blessing today to encourage us. Thank you, God. So now, for us to be free now, <clears throat> To be free in Christ. You know, sometimes you got to free somebody else. Oh, yeah. We walk around with the suitcase, the backpack, the trunk on us of other people's issues, of yeah. other people's problems, of other people's sins, and what they've done and what they didn't do, what they could have done. And we carry all this weight around and we lug it around year after year, week after week, month after month. And we just burning down with somebody else's mess. It's time to be free, y'all. Yeah. And how do you be free? You forgive them and move on. Keep on moving. I'm free. I'm free. The, the stuff that folks done to me 10 weeks ago, 10 years ago, I'm done. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm free. And I'm moving forward. Because, see, now, when I look here in verse 31, Jesus said to those Jews, we believe on him. They believe on him they believe in him but they were weak in their faith we all been weak in our faith it could be a health issue a financial issue you you know he made a way you've been there you've seen what he's done you've heard what others said but for some reason when it came to your doorstep you just couldn't believe it for yourself let me tell you something find yourself in a place of faith where you can be free Find yourself in a place where you say, Lord, even though I see, I hear, I read this report, God, I'm going to put my trust in you. Yeah. And God, if you allow me to come to this time and I continue to believe you, I know you are abiding with me. God, I know that even though I may come to this juncture in my life, you are still with me and there is a purpose. Hallelujah. There is a purpose. My purpose was, was, was when I had cancer. I believe God can heal. I've seen him heal my mother. I've seen him heal many people. But when it came to my doorstep, I had to have my own faith, y'all. I couldn't live on the faith of my mother or somebody. I had to live on my own faith yeah. in what God would do. I had to be free and know that what he could, had done for them, he will do it for me. And he done just that. So I'm telling you this morning, I'm speaking to somebody's heart this morning, know what God can do for you. Know that there is a purpose under the sun for everything that comes into our life. Even sickness, there is a purpose. Yeah. My purpose was that I would not only be able to tell folks what I heard, I could tell people what I know. I could tell people that, yes, God done this through man. God done this, and he done it for me. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, and you should know the truth, and the truth should make you free. This is the secret to abundant life, y'all. When you know the truth, what is the truth? Jesus Christ is the truth. When you know the truth and the truth is abiding in you, hallelujah. Thank you, God. You're free. There's two promises. Right there, verse 32 has two promises. It says, and you shall know the truth. The believer shall know the truth. And the second promise, and the truth shall make you free. If you don't get nothing else I said today, Go back to verse 32 and claim your true promises. Because I shall know the truth. I know that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of this world. But then he says, and the truth shall make you free. Whatever sin you committed, if you ask God to forgive you of my transgression, he is he has to. He got to keep his promise, y'all. He doesn't lie. He will never lie. He's going to keep his promise. So now, at 34, and Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. That means you serve in sin. You have a sin nature and you're a willing worker of sin. That's what he's saying. Um, and 35 says, And the servant abides not in the house forever. The servant of sin will ultimately be cast out. So now, if I give my life to Christ and I'm now abiding him in him, guess what? That sin nature of me, the servant sin sinner, is no longer abiding in my temple. It's gone. 
But then the good piece of that is, but the Son abideth ever. That means the Son, Jesus Christ, is going to abide forever. As long as I am with him, abide in him. And said, so if the Son, therefore, shall, be, shall make you free, you're free indeed. Why are we walking around with these handcuffs and chains on us in our mind, y'all, in our mind? We are cuffed down like a slave because we are carrying the sins of this world, the sins of our past, and the sins of somebody else with us. I'm telling y'all today, become spiritually free. Let your spiritual liberty, your freedom in Christ Jesus rule in your life. I don't care what you've done. I don't care if you've been the, what we call the cheapest sinner. Guess what? All sin is sin. There's no little sin. There's no big sin. If you lie, you lie. If you murder, you murder. God looks at it all in the same manner. It's us that put it in levels and degrees. Guess what? We don't have the right. We're not the judge nor the jury. We're not going to be the one to give eternal life or damnation. Hallelujah. We have been called to do wonderful things, y'all. And I come before you today to give you hope that you're free. Oh. If you've accepted God and you've asked him to forgive you, yeah. and you're doing the best you can to walk in his word, his will, his way, we got to give up our way, y'all. You know, y'all know we get stuck on doing things our way. It's got to be my way, no way, or the highway. That's how we say it. But let me tell you something. That is the thing that, that the devil used to send people to hell. Come on. Oh, yeah. He's shaking right there in front of you. It looks pretty, sound good, smell good, and all that stuff. But are you free? Yeah. No, because you're still worried about trying to please the devil. Mm -hmm. We cannot please the devil because just as soon as you do one thing to think you're pleasing the devil, guess what? He's got something else he needs you to do. He's sending you on another trip and another journey, and you're doing something else, and you find yourself in this endless cycle, just like a a, a hamster on that wheel, just going round and round and round, serving the devil. Come off the wheel. Mm. Be free. Be spiritually free. Let this mind that is in you, that's in Christ Jesus, also be in you. Let yourself know that you have a Savior. You don't have to go around in bondage anymore. I, 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 I've grown enough now that, that I don't worry about what people think about me anymore. <laughs> Because they was thinking the same thing when I was in the world. So they think the same things now. Guess what? Sticks and stones may break my bones, they said, but words will not hurt me. We've got to get a thicker skin as a Christian because what we got to know, we got to begin to get to the apologetic stage where we defend our faith, y'all. We, we, we tiptoe around our family. You know you say. You know you feel with the Holy Ghost. And you know there are some things you shouldn't be doing, a place you shouldn't be going, who you should be doing, and you not allow it in your home. Come on. You know that. Come on. But be, because that big mama, that little sis, that cuss cut, that baby, you let them come in your house and do whatever they want. Come on, man. Hallelujah. There has to be a standard. You have to defend your faith. I said I'm a born again believer. I, 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 for Christ, I live for Christ. I, I, I got to show the world something so they want to be saved too. Right. And so what do we do? We continue on in sin. Mm. The word says, shall we continue on sin and grace me about? Don't continue on in sin, y'all. Turn it around while you're turning around. Because to be free, you don't have to worry about the cares of others. You don't have to worry about the things that people think and the things that people say. That's maturity in your spiritual growth. You know when you're maturing and you know when you're not maturing. You know what it takes to mature. I've taught it. I've preached it. I've talked about it. You know what it takes. It takes getting into the word. It takes that ongoing relationship with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy. You've got to have a, a meaningful relationship. A deacon pastor and I, could not be, have been together these many years if there was no relationship, if there was no communication, if there was no ongoing discussion of anything in all matters. We could not be together this long. We could not be together in harmony. Let me bag it up. We could be together. Oh, yes, we could. But we could not be in harmony. So now we are in harmony because 
we've learned the ebbs and flow of each other. Why? Because we've been having communication and relationship. We've been we're bouncing off each other. So it's just like that with Jesus Christ. You have to have conversation with him. You got to talk to him more than noon and night. You got to talk to him when you're happy. You got to talk to him when you're sad. Don't just, just talk to Jesus when you're crying the blues about something. Talk to him on a regular basis. Talk to him when you're jovial. Laugh about some things that he puts in your spirit. Jesus, you, you, you think I'm able to do that? What you talking about? You talk to Jesus just like you talk to your sisters and your brothers. He talked in parables. He kept playing. He kept real. We get all high and scholarly. Jesus don't know that. He was a simple man. Plain man. He talked to the heart. It's a heart matter. When you're talking to someone's heart, you don't get all complicated. You keep it real, as, as my brother like you said. You keep it real. You go straight to the heart of the matter. So for, for you today, if you at the end of this sermon can say, I'm free, praise the Lord, I'm free. All you got to do is lift your hands and praise the Lord and keep on praying for Amen. others that you know are out there that are seeking something that they just can't find. They need a savior, y'all. They need a savior. They need us praying, fasting, interceding for them. I, I, I say to you today, as I close, Y'all heard the saying, you got to cry and cry loud. Let me tell you something. Sometimes you just got to get before God and you got to cry. You got to get ugly, snot up, whatever it is. Because what you're doing is you're releasing. And those things around, those crusts around your heart is falling off. You're not begging God for anything. You're humbly, humbly coming before him. Lord, I just come as humble as I know how. How is your um? I don't know what yours is. Yours may be getting on your knees. Yours may be laying prostrate. Yours may be going in your closet and closing the door. I don't know what your, your, your state is. I know what mine is. But we got to cry out to God and cry loud. We got to intercede. It says we must come to him fervently. That means with a heavy desire to please him, a heavy thirst and a hunger to win souls, a heavy thirst and a hunger to be compassionate on somebody else. Forget about who done you wrong. Forget if some people done you wrong, you don't even know they done you wrong because they done it behind your back and stabbed you in your back. So the one you know done you wrong, that's the one you pray for. Mm. The ones you don't know done you wrong, they probably done you a whole lot more damage than the one you saw face to face. But let's get over it. Let's be free, church. I'm free. Uh. I'm free indeed. Father God, as we come right now today, God, to say, say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Ooh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the freedom through your son, Jesus Christ. The blood that he shed at Calvary's cross that was for all of us, God, for the remission of our sin. God, that we would just do a simple thing as, as claim him. Hallelujah. Just claim him as our Lord and Savior. That's all that we have to do is claim him as our Lord and Savior, God. Lord, if there's someone here today that have not done it, God, I pray that you, you will prompt their spirit, God, and they will receive you as their Lord and Savior. And to those that have received you, God, I ask you, God, to give them an encouragement today, God, to, to reset, God, reset their everything about you and their relationship with you, God, and that they will go deep. And God, that they even say, I do, and they marry you and take you on as a husband, God. Hallelujah. I pray, God, for those that are in dilemma about their health, Lord Jesus. I pray for the ones that have gotten reports and they don't even know what the report is about. But God, I know that you know and there's a purpose, God. Uh, if God, it draws us closer to you, God, we, we take that, God. And we ask you that you will uh, give us the strength and the energy and the fervor God, to, to stand strong and be strong, God. To these families that are still going through because of this pandemic, God. The people in Texas and all around, God, that are going through some a, a situation, God, that I've never experienced, God, have mercy on them, God. Have grace that will be abound in their lives, God. Lord, touch the many ones, God, that have faith, but God, right now, the faith is dwelling because of what they see with their eyes, God. Oh, hallelujah. I pray, God, you will send angels of mercy and grace, God, to be blessings to them all around us, God. Those that are 
Somebody slept in the cold last night. Somebody didn't have anything to eat. God, I pray, God, that you miraculously fix their situation. God, miraculously, God, send someone in their lives on today, God. Give them something warm to give them a place to stay. God, give them a mind to come out of the cold, even God, because some don't know but to do what they do because that's all they know. But God, I rebuke the devour from their mind, even them, God, those that are trying to, to change their lives and make a new way for them. God, continue to strengthen them, God, empower them, dear God. I pray, God, right now, God, that a healing transitions, God, that you will. Step in there, God, that your Holy Spirit, God, will make a change, God, from administration on down, God, that people lives will be set free, God, that people, God, will be changed forever, God. Mm, thank you, God. I ask you to bless Sister Nay, God, that she's not feeling her best today, God. These colds and these things that they get us in sinus, God, are you able to heal, God, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, God, bring her relief on today, God. I pray, God, you will, 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 will have the, the doctors to do what they need to strengthen Minister Moe's, God, to bring her back up to where she needs to be, God, for strengthening her body. And bless Deacon Moe as he, he be her help and her caretaker, God, even for the Boone family, Lord God, the Jones family, God, the Burwell and McGee family, even for Mother Brooks as she will begin to celebrate a new, another journey on tomorrow. Uh, uh, Sister Austin, God, and Mother Chase, God, as they go into another journey. God, I ask you to bless these women, God. Bless these men of this church, God, that continue to do what you say do, God. Even continue to give them the desires of their heart, God. Where there's a few, God, you are still in the midst, God. And where there seems to be a few, God, even in, in, even in your day, in, in, in Jesus' time, God, you took a few, you took 12, and you reached thousands, God. And we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you to God, and we claim, God, a victory over our church and our mortgage right now. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Yeah. We thank you, God. And we see our way, hallelujah, in this soon to be coming to fruition, God. That's my mother, all these mothers, all these people that are on this call right now, God. Bless those that tried and couldn't even get on today, God. I pray right now, God, that you will continue to hold us up. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 <clears throat>